Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Miss Global of Motivation. I'm back with another breakfast mukbang for you guys. Yeah, mukbang slash motivational video. We're going to be doing the verse of the day, devotion of the day. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. I hope everybody slept good, rest good last night. I have my H2 over right here and my breakfast, which is some grits, some good old grits. I have a one fried egg, two breakfast sausages, and some unsweetened peaches in a can. Now, yeah, I know somebody gonna say peaches in the can ain't healthy for you, but they are for me, and they are unsweetened, no sugar is in them, and I don't eat fruits, fresh fruits, because for some reason I always tend to have allergic reaction to them. Now, I can eat oranges, I can eat strawberries, I eat a grape, but grapes always make me sick on the stomach, so... I really don't do grapes that well, so I really am not a fresh fruit person, y'all, so, you know, it is what it is, and this is me. I am on my lifestyle, uh, back on my lifestyle changing habits. Um, uh, I'm back on my weight loss journey, uh, and uh, I hope you guys support me with it. I'm doing what does say, so Lord, we're going to make it work. Let me pull up the verse of the day, devotion of the day, and... Then, while it's coming up, let's say grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for blessing me to be able to see again, God. Excuse me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for blessing me to be able to see another brand new day. I thank you for another day's grace and mercy. I thank you for another day of favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for where you brought me from, Lord, and I thank you for where you are taking me to in the future. Only you know my future, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to thank you for each and every member of my family. And I ask, Lord, that you save them the more right now. Lord, I ask that right now that you reach out and touch my little baby brother Tyrone. Touch his body, Lord, from the inside out. Lord, the outside in. Touch every organ in his body. Every organ in his body. Every illness that I've tried to take up housing in his body, Lord. Right now, Lord, I, I demand by the blood of Jesus that it be gone. I demand and I command by the blood of Jesus that he be healed, delivered, and set free from all illness, hurt, harm, and danger. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. It is done. It's well, Lord. In the name of Jesus, it's well. Father God, bless this food I'm about to receive. Let it be a nourishment for my mind, body, soul, and spirit. Bless every one of your peoples everywhere all over the world. Bless my grandkids and my great-grandkids. Keep them safe, Lord, from all hate, harm, and danger. Bless my daughter in a special way. Bless everybody. Bless my pastor. Bless the church. Bless our churches, our leaders. Bless all of your peoples all over the entire world. In Jesus' name, amen. So, yeah, I'm back with another breakfast mukbang. Y'all know I love grits. Mm. They hot. I love grits. Like, absolutely love grits. Yes, I do. Okay. I hate when, oh, you can't even get a Bible out without it being ads on it. Everything is ads now. And in order for you to get, not have the ads, they want you to pay. I'm not finna pay for, to, to be able to hear and read the word of God. It's free. Salvation is free. So I'm not paying for to get rid of ads. Today is Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, happy Thursday, everybody. God bless. 
Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, if you are new here and if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe bell. Tap that notification button so you won't miss, miss I can't talk this morning. So you won't miss any new uh, post or uploads that Miss Glow Glow and the Motivators post on this platform. Um, yesterday, I started walking. I'm starting out with 30 minutes because as y'all know, I had knee replacement. And one knee, one I had total knee replacement. The other one is bone on bone. So, I have a lot of problems out of that knee and that leg. <clears throat> and so I just got to take it slow. I plan on moving it up to where I can do, go for an hour at a time. And I'm also working on getting uh, transportation to the Y. The Y is my preference. I love the water aerobic. So hopefully I can get transportation and get back in there. I'm working on it. Mm. This food is so good, y'all have some. I know y'all can't really see it, but eventually y'all will get to see it. Let me move this bowl right there so y'all can see it. Because uh, I have an appointment set up, so hopefully my furniture should be here soon. I get everything exactly where I want to sit at, straighten up, and y'all stay tuned for the um, furnished apartment tour. I hope y'all enjoyed the, the unfurnished apartment tour. The verse of the day, no. Tell me what y'all was doing today. What did y'all do yesterday? What did y'all have for dinner? How was y'all day yesterday? I hope everybody had a blessed day. I don't really celebrate Juneteenth, but I know we did have it here in Wisconsin. It was a shooting here, as always, but it's okay. God is still in control. It's just that people can't get together and have fun and enjoy a holiday like they're supposed to. But I don't go to those things, so. Um, you don't catch me at church, at a store shopping, uh, perhaps out doing laundry. Then you don't catch me nowhere. I'm not really a... Uh, a going out to eat type of person. I do go occasionally, but that's about it. I like to cook my food at home. Now, I'm not saying that I don't ever go, but it's very, very rare. Very well. I was looking at a video today on Facebook and I I seen somebody that I hadn't seen in years since I moved away from down there. And that was brother brother Greg. He is a minister Greg now. And Living Faith Cathedral, man, it brought back so many memories. I love Apost uh, Apostle Lawson, Bishop Lawson, I call him Pastor Lawson. I like to keep my relationship with my leaders that God put over me personal. And Pastor sounds so personal to me. I know when we was young growing up, we used to call the ministers and the preachers reverend. 
But we know time brings about a change. They still reverend. So I might still do call reverend. But if it's my personal leader of the church I go to, I always address them as pastor. It sounds more like uh, daddy to me. Um, let's get into the verse of the day. The verse of the day, guys, is coming from Psalms 34, verse 15. And it reads as this. Not like good. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. That is Psalms 34, verse 15. The inspiration says this. In this world, it is easy to feel overlooked, especially when we are faced with oppositions. Too often it seems that greed and power prevail and we are left forgotten. But we can be assured that God's eyes are always on us and his ears hear our every cry. We may not understand all that we endure as it is happening but we have not been abandoned. Abandoned. God let us know that sometimes we may feel as if we are being overlooked. Uh, Y'all might see a tear run down my eye because my eyes run water this morning. God let us know with this word that we may feel overlooked sometimes, and and especially as yes, His word says when we are going through something are dealing with something and that sometimes it seems like people that have more than you um, think they have more power than you are but we can be assured that God has not forgotten about us never has he forgotten about us the little prayer said Lord thank you for seeing my plight and hearing my cries in a world where people desert me, step on me, forget me. It gives me encouragement to know that you remain faithful, Lord. Please answer my cry and come alongside me so that I may feel the peace of your presence and know that I have not been forsaken. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful little prayer for the day. Mm. This is good. They're unsweetened and they really don't have hardly no juice on them. I mean, I like that. I'm on a 1500 calorie a day diet. Eventually, I want to take it down to 12 and then to 1000. Just for a minute, you know, until I can really get my weight loss to jumping off. When I really get my legs to feeling good when I go walk, because right now when I go walking, when I get back in here, my legs is, is hurting, they ache you, and my back be hurt. Some of y'all already know that I have Well, they say I have arthritis in my back up to my L9. The L9 is the lumbar vertebrae going up my spine. So that's what they say. Well, of course, I don't claim what they say, but I know it's something going on because I feel the pain. So let's go to the devotional today. Let me just tell you guys again, I love every one of you. Every one of you guys watches my video, even the ones that don't watch the video. I love you. I love you all with the love of God. Don't you know if we don't love each other? Like Jesus loves us, we don't have no place in the kingdom of heaven. I want a place in the kingdom of heaven. I want 
heaven to be my home one day. If I could just be the the the, the person that get on my knees and wipe the floor, that sit there and rub the feet, it don't matter. Just stand at the gate, it don't matter. I want to make it to heaven. It's my goal. It is my goal, G-O-A-L. And I hope it's y'all goal too. The devotion of the day, read as thus. The title is, May We Never Harden Our Hearts. See how the word of God is lined up? May we never harden our hearts. And then they say, when do we stop hardening our heart? The, the, the devotion is coming from 2 Kings yeah. Excuse me, chapter 17, verses 13 and 14. Let's go to that. 2 Kings 17. And see what the word is saying to us today. 2 Kings 17, 13 and 14. Listen to this. This is the word today. 2 Kings 17, starting at the 13th verse. I'm going to read the 13 and the 14. It says, yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your father and which I sent to you by my servant prophets, servants the prophets. Verse 14, notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their father, that did not believe in the Lord their God. What was going on was, the Lord was had given the prophets the law to give to the peoples, and guess what? They wouldn't hear. They hardened their hearts. Did they? And the word said, did just like their father did. That's why the word of God tells us not to let our heart be hardened. Let's go back to the devotion. Once again, the title of the devotion say, May we never harden our hearts. Never harden our hearts. When we do, when do we stop hardening our hearts? When do we stop hardening our heart? That's a good question. I stopped hardening my heart when I gave my life to Christ. Because otherwise, before I gave my life to Christ, I didn't know what it was. I had no clear understanding of what it means. It's a lot of stuff that we're not going to know what it means, and we're not going to quite understand until... We repent of our sins and give our life to God. Then the Holy Spirit will start to reveal things to us. Now, the inspiration say, may we never harden our hearts. It say, this bring to mind Psalms 95. Do not harden your heart at Meribah as in the day of Massa in the wilderness. How often the Israelites hardened their hearts against the Lord. They did a lot, hardened their hearts against the Lord. They complained in the desert that they didn't have the right food or enough water and even constructed an idol. They made an idol, they did, to praise and worship. Even though God had delivered them out of the hands of abundance, and brought them into the, the desert, in the wilderness, they still didn't believe God, even though he parted the Red Sea and made way, dried up the ground for them to travel. They did not believe. They still would not accept him. So they became complainers. They made uh, idol worship, idols and started worshiping the idols instead of God. And it says... 
they even constructed an idol, the golden calf. And now they are going back to worshiping idols and abandoning their God for the God of the nation that surrounds them. Because they didn't listen to God, Israel was attacked and pretty much destroyed. Only Judah was left, and that wouldn't last long either. Because they too would abandon God and turn to idols. Saturday, we were talking about God instruction manual. Let me just hold that for a minute there. Uh, when it say that people uh, started, they turned to idols, it means that they took something, an object, like it could have been a, a calf, it could have been a doll, whatever the object was, they took it and they made that object their God. That object replaced God. They began to worship that object as a God. Now he's saying, Saturday we was talking about God's instructional manual and how the Bible has the power to keep us on the right path. How much we are like the Israelites in the desert. The peoples of Israel and Judah who refused to listen to Moses and then to the prophets who tried to bring them back to God. Who saved them over and over again. When do we stop hardening our hearts? When do we obey both the letter and the spirit of the law? The spirit of the law, the spirit of all the laws is love. The Israelites who allowed their children to be sacrificed to Baal were not ex exactly loving parents. Couldn't have been a loving parents if you allowed your child to be sacrificed to Baal. Okay? Why would they do that? I can't imagine their thinking, but they must have believed that sacrificing their children would bring them something worth having. Mm -hmm. You know, today in this world, they say some people sacrifice their children, some people sacrifice their lives, you know, for greed, for greed, for more money, for more finding, uh, for more money and for more, um, um, uh, uh, things. You know, I can't get the word out. Y'all know what I'm trying to say, but you know, they say that and it is, and it's, it is true some, in some places. And in some instances, okay, it says, but what could have been more important than their children? We are probably glad that this doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. But what about parents who believe that it's more important to work for a bigger house, a better car, or just a bigger bank account than spending time with their children, materialistic things is what I was trying to say earlier. Some people uh, sacrifice their children for more materialistic things, money, cars, whatever, okay? Not just their kids, but their families. Then they say, of course, there are those who need to work many hours just to put a roof over the heads of their children, but they, but they are sacrificing their children not sacrificing, but they are sacrificing for their children and not sacrificing their children, okay? Then it say, let's examine our own hearts and see how well we are living the law of love. How? How are we living? Are we loving other, more, other things than we are loving God? Loving our children? Are we sacrificing our children? Are we sacrificing our salvation just to gain more worldly things? Let's just say this little prayer and then we're going to get ready to end the video. I hope you guys got something out of the word of the day, the verse of the day, the verse of the day. The prayer. Good and gracious God, you have shown us the way to you. Help us to stay on the course you have set for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, God, for the word. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Now, 
the devotion again came from 2 Kings chapter 17. Read the whole chapter and you will get a better understanding of that word. The title was, May We Never Harden Our Heart. The verse of the day came from Psalms chapter 34 verse 15. And it is, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Amen. And God's word is blessed. So, that was the verse of the day, the devotion of the day. I hope you guys got something out of it. I did. Don't put anything before God. Don't sacrifice idols, objects, or nothing before God. God is everything that we need. He is our beginning and our end, our first, our last. He is a father to us when we're fatherless. He's a mother when we're motherless. Even if we lost children, he'll be that child for us. God is everything that we need. You hear me? Everything. He's not a God that he'll withhold no good thing from you because he said in his word. And he will bring our things back to your members. We must come together as people as children of God and love each other, to help each other, to be there for each other, to share the news with each other. This little book right here, this book was written by God's prophets, apostles, teachers, preachers, missionaries, evangelists. It was written by the people, the men of God, so that we can have an instructional manual to live by. The Old Testament was written for our learning. It's the history. We are to read it, learn, take heed, imply to our heart. And the New Testament is for our living. It is for our living today. Because we know that the old law was done away with and there was a new law. The New Testament. In the New Testament, it everything that we're going through in this world, in this life, it is addressed in the Bible. It might not be name for name, you hear me? But it is addressed in the Bible. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. And then if you want to know, read Acts. I mean, not Acts, read uh, Ecclesiastic chapter 3. It lets you know that there is a reason. For every purpose, there is a reason. And that everything that's happening now has already happened before. There's nothing new. So, if you want to get to know the Lord, repent of your sin. Seek Jesus Repent of your sin. Humble yourselves. Repent of your sin. Pray. Turn from your wicked ways and God will heal your land. I'm not talking about nobody else's land. I'm talking about your land, your individual land. Because that's what we are. We are on an individual race. I'm going to show you guys my outfit of the day in a minute. Just a little dress I got on. Um, but God will heal your land. He will make everything all right. He's a good God. He's a just God. He is a loving God. There's nothing I care to do more than serving, worship, praising, and living for the Lord. Yeah, I have done all the other stuff. I am yet a sinner because the Bible said, for we all sin. And fall short to the glory of God. We all do. Every one of everybody in this world do. It's nobody that don't sin. The Bible say in sin did our mothers conceive us. Okay. So we all sin. Let me show you the outfit of the day. Mm. These knees, baby. These knees. Got on a little dress. 
Mucha Arsi. Yep, I'm trying to slim down. And yeah, I don't be looking like, you know, I be looking a lot bigger than I am when I'm on that camera, but this is me. I'm trying to work on getting the rest of this weight down off of me. You know, getting rid of this good. But you know, it all come in time. But I'm getting ready to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, stay blessed out there, stay prayed up, keep the faith. Remember that God loved you so much that he gave his one and only son. We are all under one God, one nation, one love, peace we have because Jesus left that peace here with us. I love you all. God bless. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, thumbs up the video. Tell a friend, tell a friend, friend, tell everybody, friend, about Miss Glow Glow and the Motivators. Peace. God bless, and I love you all.